Welcome back one and all to the F1 2015 Pro Season Series on Box 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 Gaming. My name is Justin and today we'll be taking part in the free practice sessions and qualifying sessions ahead of the 2014 Spanish Grand Prix. Last time out in China we finished in 6th position, our best finish of the year so far, and our second finish ahead of Kimi Raikkonen in a row, which is great. So we got 8 points, which brings us to a total of 14 points so far for the season. We're 12 points behind our teammate Kimi Raikkonen, he currently has 26 in seventh place. Currently, Nico Rosberg is leading the championship with 93 points to Hamilton's 79, and Bottas and Vettel are very close to one another. Uh, 50 points for Bottas, 49 for Vettel. Taking a quick look now at the constructor standings, Mercedes completely dominating the season, scoring 43 points at all four races so far, 172 points to 89 from Williams. Red Bull racing not too far behind Williams, sitting on 83 points, and then a pretty big gap of 43 points down to my team Ferrari, but again, another pretty big gap down to McLaren, so uh, not much has changed in the way of the team's championship. Welcome to the circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia for the Spanish Grand Prix. Over the next few minutes, the teams will be heading out onto this classic Formula One track for what we're expecting to be a very hectic practice session. Catalonia saw its first race back in 1991, and the drivers are really familiar with this circuit, as it's also been used extensively as a testing track over the years as well. Well, it's a fast-flowing circuit that really pushes drivers and cars to their limits. There are two DRS activation zones, but the best overtaking opportunity for the drivers is in the second DRS zone along the main straight. In recent seasons, much talk has been made about tyre wear. Some say it gets in the way of the racing, others say it's always been part of the sport. Are we going to see drivers trying to look after their tyres here, or throw caution to the wind and worry about that when it becomes a problem? Tyre wear will probably be the dominating factor around this track. It's so easy to use up the life in your tyres as you seek to find the lap time. If you have a good balance to begin with, like the Mercedes and Red Bull, you'll always stand a better chance. Thank you, David Croft and Anthony Davidson, for that. So here we are in FP1. You can see the forecast is for rain, in fact. Rain is coming in free practice one here, and possibly other sessions as well. Obviously, Spain is not necessarily a dry circuit, so it is very possible to have some moisture. So we're obviously going to be going out on the prime tires, first of all. And uh, first, actually, I'm going to be loading up a setup. I did some uh, what I'm calling simulator work. Uh, which was actually just me going and uh, taking the 2014 Ferrari out in time trial mode in F1 2015. And I developed a baseline setup using that time trial mode because I really want a good result here in Spain. Obviously, I'm playing as Fernando Alonso. Uh, he is the hero of Spain. I mean, he is like a god among, me, uh, among men in Spain. So uh, certainly, I, this is a race where I want to perform extremely well above most other races. Catalonia is not a circuit that I'm super fast at. Uh, it is a circuit that I enjoy. Sector 3 is not the best, but it does feel better in this iteration of the F1 games. I would say Sector 3 feels a lot better because the curbing feels a lot Let's better. Get a few laps under our belt. Thank you, Jeff. And actually, this is a new Jeff. Uh, Jeff has been fired. I fired Jeff at the end of uh, the Chinese Grand Prix, I believe on the last lap of the Chinese Grand Prix last time out for those of you so for, uh, for those regular watchers. So Jeff has been fi uh, fired, but we have hired a new engineer. His name is also Jeff, coincidentally. Um, but, uh, you know, that's just coincidence. Uh, totally different guy. His name's also Jeff, and he's going to be my engineer from here on now. Uh, so we're going out on track, I believe, with just five kilos of fuel. I wasn't paying super close attention to my fuel level, uh, but it's a, a light fuel load, five to ten kilos. And uh, I just want to get a, a lap time in. Um, I'm not chasing lap time, so we got team radio from the new Jeff. Okay, let's talk about this track. You can carry much, much more speed through turns seven, eight, and nine than you might expect. Get the turn into seven right, and you can really find a good rhythm through this section. It's just a slight lift going into the right hander at nine. As for how much, that's a question of bravery. Be alert in case you dip a wheel into the gravel on the exit, as you'll need to save it. Thank you, New Jeff. So that's New Jeff on the radio there giving us some information. And that is uh, the turns that he was talking about there. Turns 7 and 8 and now turn 9. Big lift through turn 9. Really depends. Uh, 9 is one of those corners that changes very drastically depending on your fuel load and your tire life and the tire compound as well. 
Uh, it, all those different factors will really determine. Uh, sometimes it's a downshift to fifth and a big lift just to get through turn nine. Uh, sometimes it's just a lift in sixth gear. Um, it, it really varies quite a bit. So nine is quite a difficult corner, but here we are. This is the tricky part of the of the lab, sector three, but uh, the car handles very well over the curbs this year. Um, much more how I would imagine a real F1 car to handle over the curbs. So here we are starting our first time lap in free practice one. DRS is wide open for the very, very long run down towards turn one, breaking around the 100 meter board a little bit before it on the on account that we're on the prime tires and that the, the track is quite green right now. Uh, not much rubber down. In fact, really no rubber down on the track. Uh, a big lift through turn three as well. That is not a flat out corner. Even if you're on fresh option tires and a, and a low uh, fuel run, still you need to lift uh, just because you're coming into the corner faster as well. So uh, at no point will turn three be flat out. Um, but it's a lovely corner. I really do enjoy turn three. I love long corners and that's something that Spain really offers that I enjoy is, is the really long corners. The part of the circuit I don't like is really after turn 12. Uh, turns 13, 14, and 15. Uh, the right-hander and then the quick left right-hander. Really don't like those. Not a massive fan of this uh, turn 10 hairpin either. Uh, turn 11 here, where you just take a lot of that inside curb, not a big deal. Uh, downshifting and lifting off the throttle in third gear for turn 12, just to hug the inside line. Uh, down to third gear for this low fuel run for turn 13. I was using second gear at times, but I found that the rear end was less stable when you were trying to get on the throttle coming out of uh, turn 13 in second gear. So I've been using a lot of uh, third gear for the most part. And Team Radio. So it's P2, but we're only about five or ten minutes into the session, so it really doesn't mean anything. Uh, and here we are, still in FP1. So it is full wet conditions as it stands right now. We are about 35 minutes into the session. About times are dropping. Looks like track conditions are starting to improve. Really? That's interesting. Track times are starting to improve in full wets. Okay, let's update the setup. Take it easy to start with. The track's wet. Well, Jeff, you, you talk even more than the old Jeff. I, I'm pretty sure you're talking even more often. So I decided to leave this part in the video just so you can guys uh, could get a feel for what this car is like in full wet conditions. Obviously, you only get three sets of full wet tires for an entire race weekend. So I, do, I don't want to be doing any long runs, but I did want to get a feel for it because I've never done any full wet testing. I've never, I've never driven uh, any car in this game in full wets so uh, I really just wanted to get out there and get a feel for it but uh, as you can see we've got a Sauber in front of us who is not going very quickly at all as that's a big lift through turn five just waiting waiting and waiting to get on the throttle finally onto the throttle as you're coming towards the exit of the corner and uh, unfortunately we're gonna I mean we're gonna try and go around the outside of this Sauber here but it really doesn't look like he's gonna let us through um, which it's a, it's a free practice session, you know. He doesn't have to let us through. It's uh, there's no blue flags uh, in in free practice session, but it's just a, it's common courtesy. Um, I think at the Hungarian Grand Prix during practice session, uh, during one of the practice sessions, Kvyat got blocked by Carlos Sainz, and I think Alonso got blocked by Carlos Sainz as well. And you know he's not going to get a penalty for it or anything. Oh, and I've just taken out that DRS sign, just and I, I ran all four wheels off the circuit. Team Radio. I'd rather the front tires lock than the rear tires lock, uh, especially in conditions like this. I really don't want to be losing the back end under braking for a corner, so uh, I much prefer front locking compared to rear locking. And we have lost a considerable amount of time to the Sauber, actually, in that middle sector. We're closing up pretty significantly here, though, taking lots of that inside curb. Once again, lots of inside curb, even more exit curb there. Tentative on the throttle there, not quite full throttle through that final corner in these conditions, I can tell you. Uh, it was pretty uh, pretty close to full throttle, or usually full throttle uh, in other sessions. So this is FP1. Uh, I am on a hot lap, and I'm trying to set... Yeah, I'm on the option tires. You see, I get in front of Sutil here, and then he just shoves me off the circuit. Which I thought was uh, pretty interesting. Uh, I really didn't appreciate that from Mr. Adrian Sutil here. So again, you can see I just fly right by him, and then I move on to, towards the normal racing line. I break it around the 100 meter board to take the corner. And he just slams into the back of me and sends me into a violent 1080 spin into the barrier. 
And uh, again, we're, we're gonna see it one more time here. They're just flying up on him with that DRS open, the extra grip and everything. And uh, the touch happens around where I start breaking at 100 meters and just, oh, round and round and round we go. And we're just gonna take one more look at it from the exterior of the car here. You guys can see what it looked like from off a board from outside. So uh, I get in front of him, I move to the left-hand side, I brake, and there I go. <laughs> Simple as that. Thanks, Satil. Really appreciate that, buddy. So we are going to we are going to retire from this session. I believe that was FP one, uh, and I wanted to see if Sutil got a penalty, but no. Uh, coincidentally, though, his teammate did. Gutierrez got a penalty, which is a little bit strange. So you can see uh, I did some uh, long runs with the prime tires. I did a um, I did a single time. Yeah, I did a quick time of one twenty five point eight, and then I put about eighty kilos. Uh, in the car and I wanted to see how the prime tire or, or you know a scrub set of prime tires would handle 80 kilos of fuel uh, and you can see I was doing uh, you know high 28s low 29s uh, some of those one minute 30s are probably from mistakes that I had as you can see I was down to into the one, 129s again mid 129s uh, on lap 15 there so pretty good consistency. I'm feeling pretty good about this race, actually. Um, it seems that my quote-unquote simulator work in time trial mode has actually paid off. And believe, who, who would have guessed that practice would actually make me faster? Um, so it's looking pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good about the circuit. Um, there are the results for FP1. I was fastest overall by about three tenths of a second faster than Nico Rosberg. Lewis Hamilton, though, only about six tenths slower than us, and he didn't even go on the option tires. So Lewis Hamilton is looking pretty darn quick. Here we are at the circuit to Barcelona, Catalonia for the start of today's qualifying session. It won't be long now until we're ready to join the action down at trackside. Spain is one of those tracks that can create unexpected results, so it's very difficult to know who might be strong here in today's qualifying. If you can put together an efficient package with a good compromise between downforce and straight line speed, you can catch the other teams out here, just like Pastor Maldonado did back in 2012. Ferrari have a good track record at this circuit, but my money is on Mercedes to have a strong qualifying session here today. So we're skipping straight into qualifying, no FP2 or FP3. I don't think you'll have any trouble getting into the next session, so don't push too hard. Thank you, Jeff. Well, you know, when Jeff and I go out drinking at night, this new Jeff, uh, he tells me to call him El Jefe, which I, th I thought was a bit strange, you know, but I do it. I call him El Jefe because I'm a nice guy. So we're in Q1. We're obviously going to be trying to qualify on the prime tires, especially with the pace that we demonstrated during the free practice sessions. And uh, I was very quick in the free practice sessions. I, I was fastest overall at the end of FP1, um, and I believe I was in the top two or three for FP2 and FP3. They were both mixed conditions as well, though, so it looks like uh, there is rain in the air around Spain this weekend, so we, we could be seeing some particip participation in the race. Thank you, Jeff. All clear the garage, please. Car ready to leave. So we are going to go out, as I mentioned, on the prime tires here. Try and set a very okay, quick last time, lap the time. We're good to go. It's going to be uh, an out lap, and then a quick lap, and then an in lap. It's just five kilos of fuel. So here we go, starting our hopefully one and only lap of the session. We do have a car just behind us. It looks like either a McLaren or a Williams. I think it's a McLaren. It looks silver to me, not white. But we've got the DRS open going down the straight, and it doesn't look like this car behind us is going to be able to pull to the side of us, so that's good. Breaking around the 100-meter board a little bit later than what you saw in my free practice run because, of course, the track is rubbered in a little bit now. Uh, just about getting into sixth gear there before lifting off and actually running all four wheels off the circuit there. I'm almost certain I went all four wheels past the white line there but didn't get any sort of penalty or anything like that. And I'm not a stickler for that sort of thing. I definitely think I could have taken that corner better. Um, so I just continued on. I'm just going to leave it. If the game says it's not uh, track extending, then I, uh, then I will defer to the game's decision. Down to third gear for turn seven there, and then up through the gears into sixth. And then I believe, yep, it's going to be a downshift into fifth gear. Uh, not much of a lift, not much traction either at the, as we're coming onto the straight, coming out of turn nine there. Uh, definitely could feel the back end stepping out on me ever so slightly. You got to be really careful not to track extend there though. 
the stewards are pretty severe when it comes to track extending at the exit of turn nine. So we're going through the final sector now, just a few corners remaining down into third gear for turn 13 up to fourth quickly before dropping it back down into second gear for turns 14 and 15 and then full throttle through turn 16 the final corner of this circuit and i've still got that mclaren right behind me but i do believe they are on options Jimmy's currently in P5. thank you for the update el jefe <clears throat> so here we are having a look at q1 and it looks like everybody has set a time yes good everybody set a time so no problems this time uh, with drivers uh there was the same bug that was happening before with fp2 and fp3 with the flats but it wasn't as bad this time that's qualifying one finished and it sees force india's sergio perez who's been knocked out a very poor result for the mexican driver no oh, sergio Anyway, so we did finish in fifth position, and I only put in that one lap. You can see I was actually three tenths slower than Daniel Ricciardo, so it wasn't a great lap. Nico Rosberg, though, putting in a 125.1 on prime tires. That's incredible. I think I'm capable of doing a 24 on the options with my Ferrari. I think, I'm uh, like Lewis Hamilton's time here, is a 124.7. I think I'm capable of matching that time. Uh, obviously, I didn't put on the options for Q1, but in the next two sessions, I am going to be looking for that elusive 124 on the option tires. That's the time I'm going to be looking for. So on to Q2 now, and it is raining, and I've already got the intermediate tires on the car. I'm going to make a quick setup adjustment. Obviously, Park Ferme is in effect, but I can increase my front wing angle, so I went ahead and put on an extra uh, wing angle. I, I took it up to three from one. Everyone ready? Okay, let's go. Thank you, Jeff. So here we go. We're going to go out and we're going to qualify on these intermediate tires. You can see the rain is coming down right now. Uh, there's two different types of drops you're seeing there. Uh, the drops coming off the garage and then the skinnier drops are the ones that are actually falling. And actually the Mercedes coming out right in front of us. I struggled a little bit to find a gap here, but I have managed to find a gap. There is a car right behind us, uh, but they're way too far back. There's no way they're going to be able to pressure us down this straight. And I think I've got a little bit of advantage in the wet conditions i think i'm a little bit quicker than the ai and also my uh rear wing angle being at one is going to help more without the drs versus with the drs um it, it's kind of hard to explain I'm, I'm not really going to try to explain it during a hot lap but essentially uh we do get more benefit uh when drs is not active from having the lower angle rear wing so going through turn four now team radio Jeff. Jeff, Jeff. First of all, Jeff, I'm in mix three, okay? Second of all, Jeff, this is a hot lap. This is not an out lap. I already did my out lap. This is my hot lap. Why are you talking to me during my out, my hot lap? Oh, as we've gone very wide at the exit of turn nine there, barely keeping the car on circuit. I just downshifted into fifth gear for that corner, locking up a little bit, going into first gear. It looked like very, for just a very brief moment at the turn 10 hairpin there and staying in third gear as we head into turn 12, sticking it close to the inside, very careful getting on the throttle there, up into fifth gear, dropping it down into third gear, missing my apex there for turn 13. And then once again, dropping it down to second gear for the final couple of corners here, taking lots and lots of that inside curb, being careful not to run too far off the circuit because we don't want to invalidate this lap time and the run to the line now. And what's it going to be? It's a 134.4. Fantastic. That was the fastest lap. And that is the fastest lap so far. And as we can see here, it is the only lap so far. We're about seven minutes into this session, and Fernando Alonso is the only driver that has put a time on the board. And it does look like, as you can see from these live images in the pit lane, it is raining very, very hard right now. And it doesn't look like it's going to be intermediate conditions anymore. I expect that the rest of the drivers are going to have to go out on a set of the full wet tires. And there is confirmation as some Sebastian Vettel and also the Lotus just ahead of him are both on full wet tires. Now, obviously, 
it was raining pretty hard when I was out there on the intermediates. It may have been full wet conditions, so I have to keep an eye on this. There's six minutes remaining in the session, just over six minutes. We are waiting for somebody to set a lap time so I can see if I need to go back out there on a set of the full wets and see if I need to improve my time. Obviously, here in Q2, I need to finish in the top 10 drivers if I want to advance, but it looks good. Great job. We're much higher up the field than we expected to be. It's looking very good. No one's been able to beat me so far. That's the end of qualifying two, and now it will all come down to the top ten shootout to see who will be on pole for tomorrow's race. So we do qualify in first at the end of Q2. Obviously, that doesn't mean anything. It just means we advance to the next round. But you can see we were quite a bit quicker than all the other drivers, and we didn't have to use a set of the wet tires. There are more sets. You get four sets of the intermediate tires, only three sets of the full wets. So... I was happy that I was able to do my time on the intermediates and not have to go back out there for a second run. So it's looking pretty good once again, but you really don't want to pay attention to the gaps here at the end of Q2 because it was so wet and the tires were different. So here we are in Q3 and we can see it is dry. So it has been a crazy weekend so far. It's rained in every session. It rained in FP1, FP2, FP3, and during qualifying, during qualifying two specifically. <clears throat> as we're about to head out on track and do our first lap. So obviously, just like previous qualifying sessions, I'm going to have two opportunities to set my best possible lap time. I'm going to go out there with five kilos of fuel. I'm going to do an out lap. I don't know what you're talking about, Jeff. I don't know. What, you're making all the same mistakes that the last Jeff made. Nobody's set any lap times yet. So here we go. Again, I'm going to be looking for a, a 124 point something. I don't know if it's going to be a high 24 or low 24 or mid 24, but I'm looking for a 124. The DRS is open and we're heading down once again toward this very, very long straight towards turn one. And we're going to be breaking right around the 100 meter board down into third gear, taking lots of that inside curb. And again, lots of inside curb up into fifth gear just about once again making it into sixth gear but staying in fifth gear this time not running all four wheels off the circuit so keeping everything very legal for this lap as we drop it down into third gear for turn four now accelerating a little bit of wheel spin in fourth gear there and then down the hill through turn five and staying in third gear for the better traction coming out of that corner using a little bit of that exit curb staying to the right hand side just about missing seventh gear and then dropping it down into fourth gear on these option tires with the low fuel only fourth gear for turn seven downshifting to fifth gear and lifting through turn nine really not the time to be talking to me Jeff this is Q3 and I've locked up I've locked up my front left tire as we t headed into the tur turn 10 hairpin but I have managed to get it all slowed down in fact I think I even hit the apex ever so slightly so it wasn't too bad too much time lost there a little bit of a wobble there coming out of turn 12 as the w uh, back end tries to step out down into second gear once again for the final couple of corners taking lots of curb trying to get on the power as early as I possibly can full throttle now through turn 16 waiting for the DRS de uh, detection line or the activation line and then we cross the line and it's a 125.2 and that is not the time I'm looking for so I went ahead and restarted the session because I know I can go faster than that I mean I'm talking like half a second faster than that I know I can do better I made some mistakes I had some oversteer moments so I've gone ahead and I've restarted the session so we're uh, this is Q3 started over again and I mean, I wouldn't have done it if this wasn't Spain. You know, I'm Fernando Alonso. This is Spain. I need a good result. If I could get pole position legitimately without any sort of penalties or anything like that for my home race, that would be fantastic, especially in dry conditions. It would be a huge morale booster for myself as well and possibly give me that energy, that that good feeling the good vibes that i can actually win this spanish grand prix um so i like i said that's really the main reason that i restarted it um i wouldn't normally do that i haven't done that in the past obviously i did it in malaysia because there was something weird going on in q2 where i just couldn't go fast for some reason uh but besides that i haven't really done any sort of restarting of qualifying sessions so that, that is this is a bit of a strange one breaking down to the uh, turn 10 hairpin there and much better through there actually no lockups i don't think i went too deep that time down into third gear and once again hugging the inside line through turn 12 
very, very difficult to get on the throttle coming out of that very long corner, that long uphill right-hander. Again, down into second gear, over the curbs, taking lots of curbs, nearly cutting the corner. In fact, very aggressive through the penultimate corner there. Again, full throttle through the final corner. DRS now is open, and we cross the line, and it's an even worse time. It's an even worse time. So at this point, I am very frustrated. So I have slammed my Ferrari into the barriers out of frustration. And I'm trying to restart the session, uh, but it doesn't give me the option. I'm hitting pause. Now I'm hitting A because I don't want to see this cutscene. So I'm hitting A, A, A. Like, come on, let's go, let's go. I just want to restart the session that's one the more time. And oh God, that's a loading screen. Oh God, that's a loading screen. What have I done? Why was I pressing A? Oh, God. So this is a screen grab from what just went ha from uh, what just passed by. So basically, I skipped over. I, I was mashing A to skip over the uh, cutscene that it was showing where Alonzo's all disappointed about me crashing his car. Um, and I accidentally hit A to advance to the next session. Uh, when I got to that loading screen, I very, very quickly Alt F Ford out of the game. I was very worried that I was going to head into the race with whatever time I had just posted, that 125.5, and it does appear that that is the case. And uh, the very interesting thing here is uh, that actually I would not have gotten pole position. There's absolutely no way that I would have been able to do a 123.7, but I do believe I could have been on the front row of the grid. Lewis Hamilton only managing to do a 125.0. I definitely could have beaten that time. I could have been on the front row of the grid, but I'm Unfortunately, because of my own mistake, we are going to be starting this race in fourth behind Sebastian Vettel and just ahead the, uh, ahead of the two Finnish drivers, Valtteri Bottas and Kimi Raikkonen, right behind us in fifth and sixth. So it's a very, very disappointing qualifying session in the end here for Fernando Alonso from his home Grand Prix in Spain. Really not what I was looking for. I really was hoping for first or second on the grid, and unfortunately, we're just going to have to go with it. I already tried opening the game back up and seeing if it did go to the race, and it did, in fact, go to the race. So, as I mentioned, we will be starting this race from fourth position. So, uh, not the qualifying that I was hoping for, not the qualifying that I was expecting either, but we are going to be starting the Spanish Grand Prix from fourth on the second row of the grid, and hopefully we can make up positions or not lose too many positions. It's a very, very long run down to, towards turn one, so it's going to be very important for us to get a good start on race day if we're going to try and hang on to any sort of good positions. I'm not really sure yet whether I'm going to try for the two-stop or if I'm just going to go for a three, excuse me, a three-stop. Uh, I haven't decided as far as strategy goes. Um, I really don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to have to start on the option tires, obviously, and then I think I might I might go for the prime tires on the second stint, purely so that I can have the option of doing whatever I want for, for the end of the race. I can either throw on another set of the primes to go to the end, or I can come in for two more stops on the option tires and be very, very quick at the end of the race. So again, I'm not entirely sure what I'm, what I'm planning to do. Um, <laughs> you know, this is a big question mark in my head, but uh, I am about to go do the race right now. Uh, very shortly here, I will be recording the race. And um, yeah, so hopefully, again, we can make up some positions. Hopefully we can, uh, you know, uh, pressure Vettel and maybe possibly have some sort of pace that could get us a podium. I'm really not sure. Um, I've had some struggles with uh, consistency at this track, so it's, it's going to be a tough race. Um, I am looking forward to it, but uh, we're not in the best starting position. Anyway, I thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you out next time for the Spanish Grand Prix.